AccuRide Wheel End Solutions is your only single source for industry leading wheel end solutions. This video is one in a series to show you the correct method for installing and properly maintaining your AccuRide and Gunite brand wheel end components to ensure their maximum performance. Our Gunite brand product line includes 100% made in the USA brake drums, disc wheel hubs and rotors for a range of commercial vehicle applications. Our commitment to deliver high quality and dependable performance is the hallmark of our full line of heavy duty commercial vehicle brake drums. Our brake drums are proudly made in Rockford, Illinois by American workers and are proven reliable in countless miles of service. In order to maximize the service life of your gunite brake drums, proper installation, periodic inspection, and maintenance procedures must be followed. The information in this training video will help in establishing a brake drum maintenance program, one that will help you recognize problems and make necessary corrections to restore balanced braking and ensure safe, reliable brake system performance. Let's start with the basics. A brake drum is a component in the braking system used to retard the motion of a vehicle. It does this by the use of friction, when the brake linings are forced against the brake surface of the brake drum. This turns the energy of motion into heat energy created by the friction between the brake lining and the brake drum. This heat is then absorbed and dissipated by the brake drum and lining. When replacing a worn out or damaged brake drum, you should follow certain procedures to ensure that you choose the right replacement drum and that it is installed properly. Brake compatibility is extremely important in that each brake on the vehicle must perform equally in order to effectively produce a balanced and controlled stop. Proper matching of brake assemblies will maximize your brake stopping performance provide longer service life between overhauls, and minimize brake maintenance costs. Both ends of a common axle must be in the same state of repair. If the brake shoes on one end of the axle are replaced, the brake shoes on the other end of the axle should also be replaced. If one brake drum on an axle is replaced, the brake drum on the other end of the same axle should also be replaced to maintain consistent braking performance. Now let's take a look at the features of a brake drum. These include the mounting flange, bolt holes, sometimes referred to as stud holes, the pilot, the wraparound, the wraparound is the transition between the mounting flange and the brake surface. The squealer band or reinforcing band. The bell end or open end. And the brake surface. Older stud piloted mountings have a close fit between the stud holes and stud diameter. The drum is installed on the hub pilot. The wheels are piloted on the studs using inner and outer cap nuts. Hub piloted mountings have a close fit between the drum pilot and the machine pilot, continuous or interrupted, as shown here on the hub. The drum bolt mounting holes are larger than the stud diameter. The wheels and the drum are piloted on the hub. It is important to make sure that the correct hub and drum combination is used when replacing wheel end assemblies. Incorrect or mismatched parts may result in loose or broken mounting studs or wheel ends, which could lead to an accident. If you are unsure about the correct combination for your application, contact the manufacturer for the correct part numbers and styles. New drum designs will allow you to use the same drum for ball seat and hub piloted applications when matched to the proper hub. These new drums cannot be used with older hubs that have a different pilot diameter. Matching the drums with the proper hub is critical for providing and maintaining the support of the wheel end. Now let's review some common conditions found when inspecting brake drums that have been in use. Heat checking is indicated by short, fine hairline cracks on the braking surface of the drum. 
This condition results from the constant heating and cooling of the braking surface. Normal heat checking is expected and does not impair braking performance. A brake drum needs to be replaced if one or more heat checks extend completely across the brake surface and or if the heat check cracks are 60 thousandths of an inch wide and or 120 thousandths of an inch deep or greater. Crack drums have a crack extending through the entire wall of the brake drum. This can be caused by several things. Improper seating or piloting of the brake drum. Excessive heating and cooling of the brake drum during operation. Setting the parking brakes when the brakes are extremely hot. And on newer brake drums, cracks may result from mishandling. Any brake drum showing a crack must be replaced immediately. Be sure to seat or pilot the drum properly. For outboard mounted applications, follow the recommended procedures for proper drum mounting as later described in this video. Once the drum or drums have been mounted, check the brake system for proper brake balance. Use the proper brake lining friction ratings as recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. When possible, allow overheated drums to cool before setting parking brakes. A problem known as blue drums can be detected by a bluish coloration on the drum's braking surface. This can be caused by several things. Brake drums being subjected to extremely high temperatures. Dragging brakes or a brake imbalance. Continued hard stops. Glazed brake linings. You can continue to use blue brake drums so long as deep cracks have not developed and the drum remains within the allowed tolerances for operation. If the condition is left unresolved, it can lead to the development of martensite or cause the drum to crack through the entire wall, forcing an immediate replacement. It is important that you check for weak or broken return springs and check the brakes for proper adjustment. Martensite brake drums display dark colored spots that are hard and slightly raised from the drum surface. This can be caused by several things. The use of improper friction material, dragging brakes or brake imbalance, continued severe brake applications, burnishing techniques. It is necessary that any brake drum showing indications of martensite be replaced. In addition, the entire brake system must be checked for proper balance between the tractor and trailer, as well as wheel to wheel. For example, air distribution and brake adjustment. Also, check to make sure proper burnishing techniques are used. Next, scored brake drums are indicated by a defined grooved appearance on the braking surface. Several factors can cause scoring, including foreign material in the rivet holes loose rivets or bolts, broken or loose brake shoe springs, abrasive material entering and building up on the braking surface of the drum, using a poor quality brake lining. Light scoring, no more than ten thousandths of an inch deep, is acceptable. Rebore the brake surface if the finished diameter does not exceed eighty thousandths of an inch over the original diameter or replace the brake drum. Dust shields may cause or cure this problem. Depending on circumstances, foreign material may get trapped behind the dust shield, causing this condition. Or if dust shields are not present, it could be allowing foreign material into the brake, causing the same condition. Repair any loose rivets or bolts that fasten the brake blocks to the shoe core. Polished brake drums can be identified by the mirror like finish on the braking surface. This typically is caused by using a lining with an improper friction rating or lightly dragging brakes. Polished brake drums can be easily repaired by sanding the braking surface with an 80 grit emery cloth. Check for loose or weakened return springs and worn camshaft bushings. Check the vehicle's air system for any malfunction and shoe to drum contact. Consult the vehicle or brake lining manufacturer for an alternate, more appropriate lining. Brake drums will show discolored spots on the braking surface from oil or grease stains. The mounting flange and other brake components will usually be covered with oil or grease. This is normally caused by two things. 
a leaking oil and or grease seal, improper lubrication of the brake components. Grease-stained drums can be remedied by repairing the source of the oil or grease leak. Then thoroughly clean the brake drum using brake cleaning solvent only. Last, replace the brake linings. A brake drum is considered to be oversized or worn when checking the diameter for wear, the diameter of the brake surface exceeds 120 thousandths of an inch over the original diameter. The oversizing can be caused by normal wear conditions. If your drum is oversized or worn, replace the brake drum and linings. When reboring brake drums, the finished diameter should not exceed 80 thousandths of an inch over the original diameter. Both ends of a common axle must be in the same state of repair. Do not perform single end repairs. An out of round drum exists when the drum diameter shows variations greater than 10 thousandths of an inch at different points around the braking surface. Several things can cause this to occur, including Excessive heat is generated during brake applications. Setting the parking brakes when drums are extremely hot. Improper drum storage or handling techniques. And improper installation of the drum. If the diameter of the drum's braking surface is within allowable limitations, the drum can be machined to restore it to a concentric shape again. If the drum diameter is past the recommended limitations, the drum must be replaced. When reboring brake drums, the finished diameter should not exceed 80 thousandths of an inch over the original diameter. When measuring brake drums for wear or checking the roundness on the brake surface of the brake drum, it is important to use proper techniques. It is equally important to use a calibrated ID micrometer. It is important to use the measuring tool as it is designed. Be sure when taking measurements that the measuring tool is centered on the brake surface and at an equal distance down into the brake drum from the open end or bell end opening. Notice this tool is lying on the drum and is not vertical resting on its pins, so the dimension shown is not accurate and not within tolerance. As shown here, the tool is used in the correct upright position resting on the pins, and the dimension shown will be accurate. Improper piloting of a brake drum can cause severe damage to the drum and its surrounding components. It is important to check pilots for damage and wear. When replacing a drum, check for foreign material that can build up at the pilot radius, since this can hinder proper piloting. Drum manufacturers machine different pilot chamfers where the drum mates to the hub. It is important to keep this area clean and free of any foreign material. Here is a cross-sectional view of the brake drum properly seated onto the drum pilot on the hub. And now, some examples showing evidence of improperly piloted brake drums. This example shows the heated stressed area concentrated near a damaged pilot. This example shows the close-up view of where interference occurred with an improperly piloted brake drum. And this illustrates where a drum was incorrectly piloted and the aluminum material was shaved away. Here is an example of where the drum pilot on the hub is against the chamfered area of the brake drum, as can be seen from the witness marks. This caused the mounting flange to crack when the wheel nuts were tightened. The witness mark should be located in the area described in this picture. Before attempting a brake drum installation, it's important to carefully inspect and clean all mating surfaces, ensuring that they are free from foreign material and corrosion, and are not worn. Be sure that there are no burrs, defects, or wear at the pilot areas of the hub. On new brake drums, clean any rust preventative off of the mating surfaces and brake surface. Also, be sure to inspect the brake shoes and brake shoe hardware, such as springs, bushings, anchor pins, and rollers. To help ensure that the brake drum is seated properly, it is best to position the hub so that the pilot is located at a 12 o'clock position. Mount the drum onto the hub making sure that you have proper piloting and mating surface contact. 
While installing the drum, avoid damaging the threads on the wheel studs or drive axle studs. After final assembly, make a visual inspection to verify there are no gaps between the brake drum and the hub's drum pilot. Check for any unusual gap differences between the lining and brake drum surface. And be sure to follow proper wheel nut tightening and torque specifications. To learn more about the warranty for Gunite brake drums, visit our website at www.accuridewheelandsolutions.com. Additional reference information is available in the Gunite brake drum maintenance and installation manual and in the ATA Technology and Maintenance Council's TMC-RP608. Gunite Brake Drums. Quality you can depend on. From Accuride Wheel End Solutions.